Hello, everybody, again. Thanks for sticking around. Yesterday evening, we were talking about the importance of water. So um, I hope you can also enjoy the nice water <laughs> rainfall we had. It's, uh, it was a bit of a pity, but it's just imagine the plants. They've been longing for this. And I think they're all regenerating. They're maybe breathing and t sucking up the water. And let's take this as a good sign of energy and use the time we have now uh, without the rain. So we've been talking about textiles, about supply chains, and it becomes clear that the economics somehow has to change. We have to find new models. Um, we, we, we talked a lot about certificates, but today we have six innovative experts who have quite different systems, and probably they, we need a lot of more different systems. Um, on how we can deal with clothing um, in, in a new economical way. So we'll start. Yesterday we launched, had a pre-launch of Share It. And today I am uh, very pleased to invite Nicole Keller from GreenUp because they're launching for the first time in Switzerland um, Clothing Loop. <laughs> Please, Nicole, tell us what, what you want us to do. What is your bag about? <laughs> so, uh, looping is all about keeping things among us and reusing it again and again and again. Um, it's a clothing swap concept, um, but different. And I think, as uh, we learned, that 75% of clothes are in our closets, I think an additional concept fits very well with other concepts like walk-in closet. So I'll just tell you what it is about. Um, again, that's the statistics. Did you know that? How many clothes do you have in your closet? Could be, huh? Um, so if you also have some clothes that you can, uh, can pass on to others, our concept is that um, you pass them on to people in your neighborhood, while at the same time you get to know those people. So uh, women uh, form kind of a loop with each other. They um, continuously swap bags of clothes with each other. Somebody brings it to your house, you have a few days to look into the things, fit them, see if there is something you like, and then you, um, you put something back if you want, and then you can pass it on to the next one. And this continues and continues. It's a concept that uh, we didn't invent. It's from the Netherlands. Uh, by now there are 400 loops there running um, and as I'm a Dutch person, I heard the statistics. I thought, this is something we need to bring to Switzerland. So we tried it out in my hometown, Davos. Um, and we did that for nine months now. We are 28 women, four bags, and it's working super. Uh, it's like receiving a present every day, <laughs> or uh, every day when you receive a bag. Um, and you get to know new people. Actually, next week, we'll have our first party with all the people uh, because they want to now see each other as they are connected in an app. And they see only the one that they get it from and bring it to. Um, so it's a very social concept as well. So this is how it would work. It's in German. Um, you can sign up on our website. But at the moment, we're still looking for many starters, which is really easy. You only need 15 people that live close to each other, and then you can kick it off. We have toolkits for that. Um, and then you get your bag. You can keep it a bit, and then pass it on. So these are some examples of um, things that people found in the bags and were very happy with and uh, shared it with us. And our goal, um, I guess, as many, uh, that the whole of Switzerland will start to swap clothes. Um, but no, only um, 
already having a thousand would make a huge difference. So we'll take it step by step. We have talked to a lot of people here who are interested, some to start loops, some to participate in a loop. Um, so we'll continue. So we hope that you keep following us. Um, we are from, um, the project is from the association Green Up. So we're all about less is more every day. Um, and you find our project on our website. So you can also scan the QR. We're around here, me and my colleague Gabriella. So uh, just get in touch and uh, happy looping, I would say. Happy looping. Have you already found some loopers, or how do you call them, the starters uh, at the Gwand? You've been looping and walking around all day. Yes, we did. Actually, I just received a message that uh, Zurich Altstetten is uh, confirmed. Uh, I've received requests from Solothurn, uh, Luzern. Um, so yeah, it's kicking off. Wonderful. And um, I think you've done a, a pre-launch. Pre you already done, did a test in, in Davos. Can you tell a little bit about it? Sure. Um, I think we started with 16 uh, ladies that I um, probably put an ad out and said, look, we're starting this project. Who would like to join? Um, and it grew from there. And yeah, as you see uh, in the, uh, as you saw before in some of the pictures, um, by now we've got to know each other uh, and we share more things. And uh, it's really cool because people are looking for those like-minded people. I feel wonderful. Let's hope that the next Gwand we have. Um you said a thousand people you want to reach, so you need minimum. No, that's no, just a sorry. Start. Sorry, we'll have a thousand groups, and uh, please pass it on. Get tell your fashion-oriented. What kind of people uh, participate? Are these people who like to change clothes a lot? Or are they sustainable groupies? Um, I would say no. It's actually um, very open to everyone, and the cool thing is is that you can try the things on at home. Whenever you feel relaxed, try it on with other clothes that you have. Um, and we see that people who, just regular people, my neighbor who not much into sustainability just says, well, actually, I do have some excess clothing. <laughs> um, can I join too? Okay. So it's very, it's very open to everyone. Yeah. Wonderful, simple, straightforward idea. Lots of good ideas come from the Netherlands, I would add. And let's see that the Swiss community gets looping quickly. I'd like to pass on the word to um, Yumi. There's some similarity in your project, and but you have uh, more experience. Tell us a little bit about Walking Closet. Yeah, so Walking Closet is a non-profit organization and um, we are organizing fashion swaps all over the Switzerland. And I am responsible together with Timo <laughs> um, for swaps, clothing swap events here in Lucerne. Um, so the idea is to to circulate the clothes, to reuse the clothes, and instead of buying all the time the new clothes and throwing them away. So yeah, it, it's kind of, um, it's, it's a similar concept like the clothing loop. And it's a really fun way to be sustainable. And whenever I swap my clothes, I, I um, make a post, I, I do a post on Instagram and, and I uh, write a hashtag um, sustainable fashionista, <laughs> fashionista. Um, yeah, I, I also organize fashion swaps by myself privately with my friends, and it's really a nice way to get together. And you can also have food and drinks and a little party, and then you will get to know you um, you, you will get to have new new clothes. And these walk-in closet events, are they all over Switzerland or do you have uh, downtown uh, places or...? Um, all over Switzerland. Um, 
of course, in Lucerne, then in, in, in Zurich, in Winterthur, I think in Solothurn, uh, I don't know all the cities, um, but yeah, Bern, Basel, yeah. I've been to one, it was quite a party, and it was amazing, there were like, I think a hundred people running yeah. in. It, yeah. was, uh, it felt a little bit like fr Black Friday, but then it got <laughs> cooler with, with time. Okay, thanks so much. Um, can I pass the mic on to Lydia? She, yeah. You have also something in uh, Second Life. Idea, please tell us about your concept. So, uh, yeah, I make handbags <laughs> from non-animal origin because they're more sustainable. They use less water, less uh, CO2, less CO4. But um, as I was working into making a circular product, I um, established that the circular materials are maybe not as durable as the non-circular materials. So I started thinking, how can I close this loop? How can I make sure that uh, the bags are used and reused and recycled and uh, until like really we can't do anything anymore. So I spoke to my suppliers, I spoke to everyone around, to my customers. We also have to understand the mentality of our customers. They work hard and they want new things. So I think that that's okay too. We all have our own things that we, we want to do and they should get a new bag if they want to get a new bag or new clothes. But it's really maybe our responsibility to make sure that what, what we produce does not end up in the landfills. So I offer them to, when they're done using the bags, to send them back to me, and I give them 30% of their new purchase. So that incentivizes them to, to exchange the bag instead of just leave the bag somewhere or just get rid of it, put it in the bin. And like that, it comes back to me. I have a look at the bag. I can either restore it, put it back on sale. I can maybe recycle it in something smaller. And then once I can't do anything, I can shred it. And my idea is to make a little pillow line, you know, with <laughs> we'll see what will happen. At the moment, we just started the, pro the project and already people are participating, which I thought it's really nice. So it's resonating with people, which is also very encouraging. And um, yeah, we'll see what the end of the bags will be. But I think we've got, the materials are very durable, so we've got time until we come to the um, end life of it. Wow, amazing. And often we have materials that are more durable than the fashion cycle or the interest. And, and it's, it's really great if the producers themselves offer a way to... People usually want to change uh, bags either every year or maximum every two years. So we have to, we have to be aware that they, they want to change. And there is people that do not want second hand, they want new. So mm -hmm. like this, we also offer to different um, audiences, different customers, and everybody can share and it's again circular in that way. <laughs> um, it's, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi, can you introduce yourself? Um, uh, you are from ICEP. It's, you, I keep, I keep. I keep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it now. I yeah. keep. Yes. I, I don't give. I care, I keep. I care, I keep. Yeah. And from what I understand, you, you have consultancy and you, you do a lot, whole range no, of different... A, we actually have a tech startup, so we enable brands like Lydia's brand. So when we talk about circular fashion, the first thing that comes to mind is Patagonia. Yeah, I mean, we all talk about Patagonia, they built the whole concept. Uh, but if you're going to drive impact, it can't just be Patagonia doing this concept. I mean, you have to enable every brand to be able to take back their products and then enable the reverse supply chains around recycling, around secondhand, around upcycling. Uh, and what we build is we build technology that goes into the e-commerce space of brands uh, so that they can take back their products easily. I mean, a brand, it's already difficult for a brand to build a product their customers love and take it to them. We've had huge innovation in the space where like we built Amazon just to get this, a uh, multi-billion dollar company. So it's just normal that brands will require startups, innovation, to take back their products and put them through reverse supply chains. Uh, and that's where we come into play. We built a reverse Amazon, if you want, uh, to enable 
uh, any brand that wants to go circular, and it's not just fashion, it's toy brands, it's consumer tech brands, uh, it's home textiles, so your towels, why should an expensive 100, 200 Swiss franc towel or bed sheet end up in tech aid? It can go into a recycling program. So we enable that process through technology for different brands. And we're from Zurich. Yeah. I just have to understand a little better. Is it a digital product or yeah. do you really take back my, I, my so stuff I don't want to bring to What we did originally was we built it as an app, but that became, uh, yeah, we built it as a mobile application. So any brand would be in our mobile app. Uh, but we realized that in actual fact, it's difficult for consumers. So now it just works the way you trade in. When you buy a new iPhone, you trade in your old iPhone. We built that now in the e-commerce space of brands. So basically, let's take an example. If you're Mammut, uh, when you're buying something new through the purchasing journey, uh, at the end of it, our plugin asks you, do you have an old Mammut item to return? And just the way Lydia gives a discount, you get a cash back on your purchase. And then through e-commerce, we don't do the logistics. Those products move to the supply chains, and they go into a recycling program, or they go into the second-hand market. And since we're talking about economics, how do you earn your living? Uh, me, I pay, they pay to have my plugin in their e-commerce space. Uh -huh, so okay. I pay to design. So yes, there's a component of consulting if you want. So I help them. I sit down with the brand. I see what products. Are, yeah, it, for sure, with pleasure. So basically, it's a beginning. It's also not. I, brands think it's like a silver bullet that all of a sudden they're going to be circular tomorrow. They're going to. But it's not like that. You need to start somewhere. Some brands. They have a very strong presence in recycling. So you start with recycling, and then you build towards secondhand. And other brands, you have a very strong secondhand potential. If you're a, a okay. GoPro, a camera, for instance, it's more interesting to write, try to resell your product in the market than have it recycled. So there's that journey of seeing where you fit at your beginning of your journey and where your vision is in the long term. So our, jo our job is to enable your long-term vision, but also help you think realistically where you are today so that you build towards that. And that's a bit our, our job as a startup, if you want. Uh, wow, fascinating. Sometimes I have to say it, takes, it makes a little headache. It's fascinating, but you, we, we have to rethink. I mean, reverse Amazon, it's, uh, we've been used to it, and we've been taught so much to, 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 to buy and to look for, uh, for sales, and now you're telling me give it back. Give it back. Yeah. I mean, it's totally logical, but I, I guess... I think it's a, there's also a component where, where brands are missing. It's one of the most valuable touch points. Like, you, you, if you're going to sell it to a brand, you've got to sell it with a commercial aspect. No, nobody... I mean, we all love... We want to love sustainability, but brands are there to make money, and they've... Especially the big ones, okay? Like, we're not talking about big brands that have been around for the last 50 years, 60 years, they specialize in selling products and they know what they want to do and they don't want to change. So if you're going to win them over, you need to talk their language. And what's their language is like the greatest second touch point. There's one touch point that all brands love is when the customer is in their store. But the next best one is when their customers finished using their product. It's the moment he's going to switch to their competitor and it's the moment that he can tell you all about how well he used your product, yeah? And they've just missed this opportunity. They're missing out on this opportunity. And if you sell them take back in this way, then all of a sudden it speaks to them from a commercial perspective and they see the value in marketing, they see the value in data, and technology allows us to do this. It wasn't able in the past because like H&M has a take back in the store, but H&M is not going to sit inside the store and check if every item is an H&M item. They're going to just take back all clothing. But technology allows us to say, OK, I'm taking back H&M clothes. I can collect data that is valuable to my marketing department, to my sales department. And that's what technology has allowed us to close the loop, I think, at this moment. I'd like to give, uh, come to you right later on. But Lydia, can you confirm that, that this point of not resale, what did you call it? The, yeah, touch, the consumer the, touch point. The consumer, end of how, life touch how point. does that work? Uh, well, of course, if the customer is, uh, it's kind of like a loyalty as well. So for me, it's a win-win situation where um, the customer is finished using your product and then they obviously would appreciate to have a discount. And 
you know, they loyalize to you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, there is also a marketing uh, perspective in that. And I think more brands should do it because not only is it sustainable, but it also makes commercial sense. Yeah. I'm just going to throw in one more example of Infantium Victoria. They take back the products and then they give it to, for 10% for people who, uh, who, who can't afford it, people in need or people, uh, and it's n not totally new, but they're really calculating with this and some of the products have, have changed six hands or so and and there you can see the value of the longevity of the project and and hopefully also of the longevity of the relationship yeah so now um katarina yes. some of you might have heard yesterday about share it was launched a pre-launch um, has some similarity what we've heard before, but in a way it's also revolutionarily different. Please tell us. <laughs> Thank you very much. First of all, I've been living 25 years in this beautiful country and then I was away for a few years and now back I see all this innovation, so I'm very, very happy. And just when, when I hear it, to see that there are also solutions coming up for the big brands to make them move because they have also some things that they don't have solved yet, for example, the whole returns thing, and that could be improved much more, right? And I, I see here a lot of synergies even, and I'm very grateful that you're bringing us all together. I, I, some between, you know, what you're doing offline in really creating meetings, both uh, you between people, and also these technology solutions. So share it, what we are doing is, I, I caught on something that you said. You said, you, you mentioned the Amazon as an example and reverse engineering that Amazon thing. And we were saying the biggest shop of the world is not Amazon. It's the homes of us actually combined, right? So we together are actually the biggest shop in the world because each of us, and that's also high quality brands actually because each of us has, if we think really, some very, very good pieces at home that we, and it, we don't call it secondhand, you said not everyone likes it, we call it pre-loved, right? So that's, that makes a huge difference. <laughs> or even new, sometimes we have something and it wasn't quite the color, so even the price tag is on it, right? And if we manage to upload all of that, so each of us uploads that on an online marketplace, that is quite a power that comes a marketplace with quite some value. And what we did, that the question is, and that's very good because we don't need to produce this. We don't need to pollute anymore because they are already produ produced and they, they, have, they are already there. And the good thing is we don't need to store them. Storage would be a huge thing. We know that how much we pay for storage and <laughs> brand or, or fashion companies. So because the people, we are storing it in our places. So the only question was, how do we do the delivery, right? So Sherid, um, was, uh, the founder is here as well, was initially, um, yeah, came into life in Israel and started with a group of women. Actually, we started only with women in the beginning and really just doing in the application and the technology what they actually wanted, right? Not the other way around. And then working first with 5,000 for 60, they invited their friends, then 600, and then 5,000 for uh, quite a time to really find out what is needed. And then the question comes, how do you do the delivery, right? So how do you organize that? And the women did that themselves. So actually organized a peer-to-peer -peer delivery. And the thing is, why is it different and reverse engineered than Amazon? Because it doesn't work with money. And this is very important. That's a very important point. Because usually if you sell your pre-loved items for money, you start to compete with all the, you know, the cheap produced um, unsustainable fashion from somewhere or even other items. But in the moment where you have your own point system or your own, you basically tell the people now you enter a full new um, app, through the app you enter a, a e-commerce or a marketplace, but we give you your wallet to be able to do shopping without money. And this changes entirely. So you 
start to improve reuse, you allow the velocity to flow, the things within the community, because it always shows you also what is near to you, who are the ones in your neighborhood that do the same, right? That upload the same things. And then it allows you to do that without needing to spend money. So in terms of your question of whom do you address, you basically can address everyone. In the beginning, really, those that are engaged, that care, that make beautiful pictures, that care about beauty and caring. But in a way, shopping without money is fun as well. So. Wonderful. Really, it's inspiring to hear these clever ideas. Um, I'm going to add just a little one. We have uh, in front of our shop uh, from the Fashion Revolution a cupboard. It's called the Offene Kleiderschrank, the open. And people bring things and take things. It's, it's not mobile like your solution, but it, and it's not a party <laughs> that we're inviting to, but we've had quite a lot of lovely discussions and somehow people are happy with it. Uh, they, they all say, oh, this is much more interesting, this is much better than throwing it away for the big recycling uh, systems. They, 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 they like to do it and that's where pre-loved comes in. If, you, if you've loved something, you like to see it go in another, in, in another hand or you you've loved your bag and you want a new one, but you want your beautiful bag to, to go to the next customer. It's, it's much more, it's much um, rewarding on a social level than uh, the, the, the throwing away that we have been taught to do for such a long time. So, um, I would be interesting to hear, you've all had some experience does your system work in Switzerland and would it work in other countries? Yours works in the Netherlands and we're going curious to see. Do you think walk-in closets would be a worldwide concept? Would it work in, in Vietnam, in our, in our country that we're a guest country this year? Let me know. And I think you have also experience from other uh, cultures. I'm pretty sure it can work anywhere. It's, it's a great concept. I mean, all of them are. And uh, in every country, you will get people that are very happy to go to a party and swap clothes or receive a bag and have a look if there's something for them. And then everybody has a good item of clothing to swap. And that's for sure. And it's not because it's not good to wear anymore, but it's because you're done with it. It's, you wore it five, ten, hundred times, and then it's mm. still nice, but it's not you anymore, maybe. Sometimes we outgrow clothes and we outgrow items and we're ready for something new and this is where these clothes swaps can really help in a fun way. <laughs> Yumi, you want to answer too? Yeah. Um, Switzerland is not the first country that invented the clothing swap uh, um, concept. Um, but I'd say it works in Switzerland, it works in every other country. I know that in the UK it's very, very popular and very well known. And well, Walking Closer was founded 10 years ago. At that time, um, swap events were not very well known. And I also know that in Japan they also have walking, uh, sorry, uh, swap events and in Germany as well. It could work anywhere, definitely anywhere. So I, I just wanted to say two things um, when you told us about your uh, open cupboard. I think it's really cool to see that all these kind of solutions can coexist because I think we need them all uh, in order to really reach like the, the bigger audience. And I think that's where uh, the question comes in that you put like, can it uh, function anywhere? Yes, it, it is functioning everywhere but I think we need to start reaching the bigger audience. And uh, I think the more attractive and the better infrastructures we create, um, the people will then start to act. Uh. Yeah, that adds my question. Um. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so as I said, it started in Israel with 5,000 women and then when it opened today, it's more than 75,000 women and more than 250 
thousand items have changed hands. So that was clearly a sign of, okay, there is, it's working. And then um, we, we started half a year ago in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And also there, very different culture, very different setting. There we also work with women. And there also the, the social aspect because the, the daily users actually already today, they, they, they um, can, how do you say, save um, about 250 Swiss francs around per month, which for a normal household is quite some, it's quite a budget as well. So um, that aspect is relevant also for coming to a country with, like Brazil to make women, make people more independent from the money stress when it comes to really fulfilling their needs on clothes, but also other daily things. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting here in Switzerland, and we can already see that it's, it's really coming up. So it, I, I feel the, the, the soil is ripe for, for these kind of solutions and innovations to, to come here as well. We're building on Walking Closet and some other pioneers that to build this culture, and then everybody will find their their niche and uh, their style, and as you said, we need a whole, uh, a whole bunch of solutions, and I hope next time we will be able to present more. What about iKeep? Will it go international as quickly as Amazon? Uh, to, to be honest, I think their solutions are more, the European Union is, is or the, co the consumer, the European consumer has reached the point that he's not mass consuming anymore. He's more prone to want to trade, he, they understand the principles of not consuming and keeping for longer. The mainstream already. Uh, we get at least the Swiss, the Nordics, they're understanding okay. this better and they're leading the way. I think I keep an actual fact and the big brands where they're making their money is Asia mostly. They're selling there. The middle class is very strong. They want to buy a lot. They want new a lot. Uh, and I think if the big brands really want to reduce impact or, or drive impact, take back and the models of Patagonia need to be applied in these markets where waste management is not working very well. They don't have good recycling programs. Uh, the infrastructure is not there. So if a big brand wants to deliver impact, they should start bringing take back to these markets. So at least Adidas shoes, Puma shoes, Nike shoes are not ending up in the landfills, open pit landfills of, of Southeast Asia. So yeah, I think I keep it, it could be very strong in Asia. Very, very strong. Maybe I can give an example of what we did just as a pilot uh, to show the potential of what is possible. So there are many, you know, we, we for one reason, NGOs, for example, under these conditions at, as we are, and especially in the corona times, had less budget, right? So a bit more work at the same time, right? So it's a very delicate, difficult situation. And then what we did is we received in-kind donations because some of the big companies actually are more willing to actually donate things that they have from their inventory than to donate with money to help NGOs, right? So we received like a very good, you know, from the inventory or not sell things or refund, whatever that was, you know, clothes, but new shoes or new things and also, you know, it, uh, from from the restaurants that were closing down, the whole infrastructure, the whole mm -hmm. you know equipment and these kind of things, and they all came to a marketplace that was a private marketplace of you know the, the shared kind of but a private one, where you upload the things and then they have a tremendous value and, you, and then you create actually the accordingly the community points for that value. And you distribute that to these local NGOs, so you, so you give them a monthly budget. And with this, they can actually buy what they really, really need. They have more spending power, and they can use their normal Swiss francs or whatever it is in their local currency to fulfill their core mission of what they are there, right? So a homeless institution can actually, through the platform with the points, buy then their equipment, they were delivered, you know, their chairs or whatever they need, but they can save the money that they have uh, from their donations for really giving warm meals for the homeless people. So these kind of things. And we, we need to think innovative. In, and the most exciting thing for me is not what we have all shared, what we have done until now. What I'm really excited about is, is what we can all do together to unfold really and, and, and change this fashion industry. So I'm very looking forward to that. <laughs> Yeah, so that leads me to the question, how will we get this big step going? You said it's, it's still a niche and we need to grow a lot. 
Um, you mentioned that as soon as the governments demand take back solutions, you will you will have a lot of work to do. And 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 then, what are <laughs> what you need to to be on the really big stage to get Amazon level? What would you need, Lydia? For, for me, I'm still a very small brand, so it's quite easy to manage. And I mean, I've only been existing for eight years now, so the product is still very new. And when I receive uh, um, the bags back, some of them are in perfect condition. I can just resell them as new. But OK, they're part of the <laughs> secondhand project. And then if they're a little bit damaged, I customize them or, you know, so I'm not at the level where um, I, I'm scale obviously when we come to that we're gonna have to think of um, other solutions maybe have an atelier that will only deal with this kind of things customizing restoring recycling and um, so on so I'm really excited to see how it grows from here but yeah at the moment it's just a very exciting project that I'm launching the next project will be the marketplace which will launch in November so if people don't want to participate to the second um, hand project, they can put their own items and put their own price. Uh, as you said, some of them bought the bag, but then uh, it just didn't work out or something. All of a sudden, they, it wasn't the shape or the color or the size, and they're still brand new, so they can decide what price they want to sell it, and we just put it on the market and see how it goes. And they get, obviously, a budget, again, towards l &E. <laughs> Okay, it sounds like you don't really want to grow to 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 the mainstream side, but the know-how you're developing. But I, I want to, but I want to go step by step. Okay. I don't want to go all of a sudden and have 50 million bags and not know what to do with it. And this is why you asked me, are you accepting any bag? No, I can't. I can't. I can't do that because I didn't make those bags. I'm not really sure how to restore them or recycle them or. It's always better, you, you know your own product, you know what, you're, what you've done, you know how to customize it, you know how to recycle it, you know how, to, you know how the materials react because they're tested. So we have the knowledge to restore them. And as we grow, we'll be able to implement uh, mm -hmm. more projects and maybe really sector it. So yes, I hope one day I'll be the sustainable Amazon of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough for you? Uh, for me? I, I do believe in the power, and really we have just scratched the surface, I believe, of what we together can achieve. So I really believe in the power of peer-to-peer -peer and decentralization, and the more we understand... Sustainable life together. Yeah, exactly, of collaboration and these kind of things. So that, that Sherrod, is one example of this um, allowing, you know, the, the, the people between themselves, so not having a central storage a central in, in between but allowing them to organize themselves and that potentially is also possible for brands that potentially is also possible for individualized marketplaces that do exactly that and allow certain loops for membership or whatever so i i believe that there is a huge potential to be unleashed you want to add there? And afterwards, I'd like to open um, for questions from the audience, because these things are new. You might have some questions in understanding. And our motto is sustainable life together. So I think all of these ish initiatives would be keen on finding starters, like uh, for the clothing loop, and uh, or maybe walk-in closet. You, you, are you happy with your, the number of people you have? You can have a wish for the audience afterwards, in whatever kind, you can mention it. So, were you going to add first? I'll ask the audience and then in, in the end you can have your wish to the audience. But let's first, does somebody in the audience have a question? To one of these new economic models, these new clever ways of dealing with clothes and other items? Hat jemand eine Frage? Ja, Dini. Um, hi, my name is Dini. Um, 
I love what you guys are doing. Um, we have tried to do something similar, and the struggle we have is finding where to go at the end. Because we can talk loop all we want, but there is an unfortunate end of life for the garment. So I was really curious, what do you do when you can't repair it anymore, when it's beyond repair? Because we have been collecting our beyond repair because we don't know what to do. Thank you for that very interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was also a question that I had, like, what do we do with the bags when we can't repair them anymore uh, or customize them? So the idea was that the second stage will be to open the bag and use uh, the usable material and do a whole recycled collection. And the third stage would be when there is nothing else to do, then we shred them and we use them as stuffing for cushions. And then after that, <laughs> it's done. So there is an end of, of, the, of your bag? Well, you can, the always, yeah, you can always recover the cushion and recover the cushion and recover the cushion and recover the cushion and recover. <laughs> so there is quite a big, big loop. You're prolonging the life as much as you can. And in the end, it goes in the soil, in your case? That, well, it depends. This is what I'm... This is what I would love to have. I would love to have biodegradable materials, but uh, unfortunately I only have one biodegradable material and it's very prone to the elements. So it's really prone to um, sun, to water, to, uh, to time, mm -hmm. and uh, not as durable as the other materials. Uh, there are a lot of people working on finding a solution to have more durable but also biodegradable materials. So while waiting for that, we need to find a way to prolong the life of the um, items that are already here until we are ready to have a biodegradable solution and just put them in the ground, let them nourish the soil and... So the question <laughs> maybe for... You, you'd actually be surprised, like uh, reci the recycling industry will take a big transformation in the next 10 years. The chemical companies are there. Um, breaking down the products that we have into their molecular level is capability that is possible. It's not impossible. What is a problem is when you start building a pile of textiles which you have no idea what's inside. If you build stable material flows, very stable material flows, and you know what you're producing as a material and what you're feeding a, a chemical solution into, then you can recycle materials. The biggest problem that we've had is we don't have that stability, and tech and digitalization can change that. Okay, so to also to Vivi, it's a volumes game. If you're a small brand and you're, you've got little quantities, the recyclers, they won't listen to you because you're not a business that is viable to them. But if you get together with other brands that have the same type of product material that you use, then you start having an interesting discussion with recyclers uh, across Europe, and they are there. And this is a bit the job of I keep. Our job is to bring those little brands all together so that the accumulated volume of your single cotton, I think you're making natural cotton textile, is valuable to a chemical recycler or in this case mechanical recycler in order to recycle it properly. But over the next 10 years we should see a, a big transition uh, in the recycling industry all the way to molecular recycling. Like this is realistic and I think it's a cheap, I mean we go to the moon so we can make this happen also. I think this is a <laughs> Okay, that's a very nice image. It's a question of size and it's also a question of tra tra transparency. If I know this is cotton, then uh, we can already recycle it. Switcher does that already. If I know it's uh, biodegradable, uh, we'd love to, to compost it, etc. But the problem is the mixture. Katarina, I think the question for the, um, for, is it a little different for you? What do you do with stuff that isn't attractive anymore, that's near to their end of the life? What we do as Sherrod, well, actually, we, we offer this platform to everyone to just pre-loved items, but it's not our responsibility to actually then do the end of life. We just offer that as a possibility for people to meet okay. and to find their ways of getting the needs done, but without shopping new things, right? So this, I, I feel, is then so there may the be the, the thirty percent of the products that are not so, not bought. The rest they stay with us as we are the people, right? Okay. So it's our responsibility as people. We bring up the good things, but it's yeah, it stays with us. 
Nicole, do you want to respond there? And in the meantime, yeah, another so question? For the clothing loop, I also um, uh, would say that we're not uh, fully making the loop, so uh, there is still a part of clothes that, that we would um, put in the recycling process, the, the textile bins. But I think what is very important is that what we try to create is a culture change, because what we see initially often in the bags is um, more cheaply produced clothing, whereas what we can help to establish is a culture of actually the cool brands that you see here that are durable and that people change their own perspective. And I see that like clothes swapping is like an easy way to get into this concept and then you can help uh, create this awareness as when you do buy, because obviously sometimes we do buy new stuff and we want new stuff and that is uh, different for everyone uh, for which items that is. But when you do buy, really go to the products that have circular concepts that um, use good materials, etc. So I think there we can kind of connect. So we're connecting, for example, you and Lydia, to be a little more precise. <laughs> and uh, maybe we're also connecting, or Lydia and uh, you are already connected, I care. I, I don't think, I mean, I, I also talked with the city of Zurich a while ago, and I don't, I mean, I think sharing, when you have something, first share it, you share, you keep it in the market as long as possible. And then it reaches, yeah, an end of, an end of life, if you want, or an, yeah, an end of life. The next step is like, look if the brand will take it back, and then if the brand is not there yet in its circularity, the city of a good functioning society has a recycling program that it goes into. So I think the journey is share, 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 keep it between peers, then once it's end of life and it's overly used and it doesn't have its, it's reached its capabilities, move into a take back from the brand, and I hope more and more brands do to take back, and otherwise in modern functioning, um, affluent societies, and I hope the rest of the world can also reach that level, their cities provide a recycling program which s feeds into the brands that can't or don't deliver these type of services. An excellent summary. I, I, I wanted to add maybe one, one little thing or one that is mainly overlooked in the economy is something to enable velocity, and that's really what, what Sherrod is doing, to enable this share, 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 so that the same book of the little prince can actually be enjoyed, that was once produced, can be enjoyed by five families in one year. So it's not only fashion, it's everything, right? Um, that, that needs to be enabled, and that's something that, that Sherrod and I would say. It goes there where resources are stuck in our homes, because in the normal, like, dealing with money, it's not worth it, the effort to do it and to, to upload it or to... and, and enabling this kind of flow of both the money or the points in the society because it's making us all more rich if if you know the, the what we call money moves in our community and the things as well as as we are all, we all are working for it's it's really creating this velocity to allow as many loops as possible because you know, used to work for a bank, so this is also about assets stuck in our homes, and uh, every economist wants this to flow, and uh, we want it to flow for social reasons and ecological reasons, but they make a whole lot of economic sense. So, my last call, um, noch mal die Möglichkeit, eine Frage zu stellen. Vielleicht mag auch jemand mitmachen, geht bitte zu den... Frauen und Herren, ähm, meldet euch an, sei es als Starters von einem Loop, sei es als Leute, die bei Sherrod mitmachen wollen. Walking Closet gibt, denke ich, kann man auch mitmachen. You can join. Ähm, Nochmal eine Frage? Nein, dann ist das jetzt the end of this session. And uh, we will continue shortly after a break. Susanna. Um, will probably come here. There's an African um, fashion show or an installation that, that Hanniman has prepared. Um, we'll have a break and please come and enjoy. It's really worth it. Thank you very, very much for go, go, go. <laughs>
And again, next year in Gvand, we hope you've multiplied and we've connected and uh, we're growing this circular economy. Um, thank you. I have an announcement. Um, I'm very sure that every each of you have clothes, shoes, accessories, a home that you don't need anymore. And tomorrow we are organizing a um, um, fashion swap here behind in um, Hotel Schweizerhof. So please join us. It's starting at 12.30, but you can also come at 12 and bring all your stuff. We will go through them. And the event, the actual event starts at 12.30 and ends at 4 p.m. But you can also come later. You don't have to be there at 12 or 12.30. Yeah, so it would be nice if you could come. Go home and um, go through your closet. I'm sure you have something, at least one piece, or maybe many. Yeah, so tomorrow we have a swap event from Walking Closet. Thank you very much, Yumi, and this is lovely to have this part also. Every day we announced a new sharing project. Yesterday was Share It, today it was Clothing Loop, and tomorrow is the Walking Closet Day. So we're proud to have these mixtures of producers, but also of um, sufficiency models, longevity models. Thank you again, and enjoy the evening. Please stay for the uh, show they're preparing now. Please enjoy the food, and uh, there will be a DJ later on. Okay.